Hi and welcome students. This is the first video in a series to help you learn how to use Microsoft Publisher 2016. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I have videos on Word, Excel, Access, and PowerPoint, but I don't have any yet on Publisher. So if you've never heard of Publisher or you don't know what Publisher does, I'm going to explain a little bit about that in this video, and I'm going to show you the first few steps to get you started on Publisher. So again, if you want to learn the program, go ahead and follow along with me for the, uh, the rest of this playlist. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you'll need to know is do you have Publisher on your computer? I have Publisher because I can see it right down here, but you probably don't have yours uh, linked up to your taskbar, so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Go ahead and press the Windows key on your computer and then start to type Publisher. Okay, as you type in Publisher, you'll see it right here pop up. Now I'm using Publisher 2016, so if you follow this playlist, you're going to learn how to use Microsoft Publisher 2016. If you're using an earlier version, most of the features will be the same, however you will see a couple differences. So let's say that you want to follow along with this playlist, and so you want to pin Publisher to your taskbar down here so that you can open it easier. Well, all you have to do is once you see this icon right here, you right click and then you'll see a button that says pin to taskbar. Now mine says unpin from taskbar because mine is already down there. But anyway, you can pin it to your taskbar. That way, from now on, all you have to do is click right there on Publisher and it's going to open it up. All right, so Publisher 2016, what is it and how does it work? Pretty much when you open up Publisher 2016, you'll notice that the left side looks a lot like any other Microsoft Office application. It shows your recent files over here, and then it shows your uh, Open Other Publications button right here. So if I want to open up any recent files, I would find them right along this area, and then any other files right on that button. Okay, then you'll also notice over here we could search for online templates or we could choose from any of the templates here. Now, unlike Microsoft Word where you might choose some of these templates, typically these featured templates in this area here, these are ones that kind of change from now and uh, every now and then and they're basically you download them from office.com. So if I click them, they're pretty specific. You'll see things like cookbooks, baby albums, birthday cards, things like that. So. I'm not going to use these too much throughout this playlist, however you will see me uh, use them occasionally. But most of the time when I'm in Publisher, I want to use what's called a built-in template. And so that's going to be right here, the word next to featured, it should say built-in. So I'm going to go over these Publisher template options in, these, in this video here. So go ahead and click built-in and it'll take you to a page that looks like this. Now, in case you don't know what Publisher is, you can see all of the different types of things that you could create in Publisher right here. Things like advertisements, awards, banners, brochures, business cards, uh, calendars, catalogs, emails, envelopes, flyers, gift certificates, business cards. Uh, the list goes on and on. You can create menus, newsletters, and I'm going to go over some of these things throughout this playlist. And again, if you have any questions, you could always put it into the comment section below and I can see if I can answer your questions on Publisher. So here we go. First thing that I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to want to choose the type of publication that I want to uh, create. So in this case I'm going to be going over a flyer, okay? So that'll be the first few uh, steps of this tutorial that'll help you learn how to use this program. So after I go to built-in I could choose any of these options here and keep in mind they're in alphabetical order so I could go right down here to where it says flyers. So go ahead and click flyers on your computer if you're following along. Again I won't be using any data files for this so you can see right here uh, it has a long list of different flyers. Now the cool thing about this area is that you can choose any one of these flyer templates. Now this is why Publisher is a lot better than say Microsoft Word uh, at creating things like flyers. Lots of people create flyers on Microsoft Word, however, um, it, they, Microsoft Word just doesn't have the vast amount of template options or customization options that uh, Publisher does. Also, inside Publisher, you're going to find out that pretty much wherever you click is where you're going to be placed on your page, rather than Microsoft Word, where it's more cursor-based. So anyway, uh, if you look through here, you can see a bunch of different types of templates, but you see over here, there's three folders, okay, and you'll see these three folders and it says all event, all marketing, or all real estate. So they have it broken down into different types of events. I'm going to click right here on all event. That way I can see all of the different types of uh, flyers that they have to choose from. So they have some that are focused on information, 
special offers, and then some that are just uh, listed as more installed templates. So you can see there's over a hundred of them here. So there's a long list of different templates to choose from. I'm going to choose this one right here under informational called capsules. And you'll notice that when I click on capsules over here along the right side, uh, this is called the information pane. And this information pane over here will actually change based off of what you click over here. Now I clicked on capsules and I saw the display menu change right over here. Now I can choose the customization options right here. And so the color scheme, which you're going to find right here, uh, that basically chooses the colors for your flyer. So I'm going to click on that and I could go down and I could find any of these flyer or any of these colors rather. Now these colors are based off of uh, complementing colors. So typically if you choose from anywhere on this list, it's going to uh, be colors that generally work well together. So as you move through there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose one of these. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to go to the very bottom to where S is at. Okay, and there's one right here called Sagebrush and I'll go ahead and click that one. Okay, now notice when I clicked on Sagebrush, this one stayed generally the same, but all of these over here now show that Sagebrush uh, view. Okay, and so as you change your color schemes, they will update over here. Now, one of the things that I do not recommend you do is uh, try to scroll through this area because if you scroll through here, it'll actually change the colors. So just be careful about scrolling. My computer doesn't have a scroll bar over here, but if yours does, if you're using a smaller screen, you may need to scroll. I would recommend using that bar rather than scrolling through this area. Now here's where you could choose your font scheme. So if you click on the font scheme, you could go through all of these different types of fonts. Okay. Now the way that these are listed out is by a name first, and you can see if you uh, hover over any of them, it will change the um, it'll change where the rectangle is at and it'll show you the name. For instance, this one is called Metro and then the two font types that are associated with it. So in this one, Consolas and Corbel. All right. So I'm going to scroll through here and I'm going to choose, say this one right here, online. So online, and that's going to be with Verdana Bold and Verdana. So that's going to be my title font in, in Verdana Bold and all of my regular text font in Verdana. So I click right there and it changes and updates everything over here. All right, so that looks good. Now, business information sets. I'm not going to change the business information because what that does is if you have a custom business that you're creating it for, you could actually create a custom business information set inside of Publisher and um, it'll automatically populate in this section. So I'm not going to show that in this video because it's a little bit more of an advanced feature of Publisher, but that's my, that might be something I do in the future. All right, so there we go. Now we're getting down here towards the bottom. Let me move my camera out of the way. And you'll see you have two options down here. It says include mailing address and include graphic. The graphic is the logo from the business information set. I'll just leave it on there. And the mailing address would be a mailing address from the business information set. I'll just leave that unchecked. Now, finally down here, tear offs. If I'm creating a flyer, let's say I'm creating a flyer and I want somebody to take a little piece of information from that flyer. Well, I would uh, go ahead and put some tear offs on this. So you can do things like contact information, coupons, uh, order forms, response forms, so on and so forth. And so I could put something like contact information right here. And now my uh, template is ready to be created. And so I click right here on create and take a look at this. It goes right to publisher and then everything gets created based off of the settings that I just chose. So that's how to uh, change your customization settings in the template options for Microsoft Publisher. So uh, throughout the rest of this series, I'm going to be teaching you how to use this program, how to create flyers, brochures, newsletters, things of that nature. And so if you have something specific that you want to learn about, let me know in the comment section. But this is just the first video of many, and I'll go ahead and link that playlist at the end. So thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel and giving this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. And have a great rest of your day. And uh, again, put anything in the comment section that you want to know, and I'll try to help you out. Thanks a lot.